My name is Jorge Monson, and I am the Creative Director for Virtual Wear. Uh, I'm going to talk about the next breakthrough uh, in VR. Let me see, what is this? So what we learned about uh, VR, I'm going to go really fast. I'm gonna, I was going to tell you a little bit about the story, how I enter into this world, but uh, I'm just going to skip that. Uh, a little bit of a story you, or, you know already about this VR, 360 glasses. I'm pretty sure we tried it, but three years ago, only three years ago, nobody knew about this. You know, I, I'm telling you because I didn't even know about this. Um, so in, in, in terms of the VR, you have this uh, VR 360, which is basically you put these glasses on, your, your, your iPhone, your phone, and then you just, just look around, which is pretty amazing technology. Uh, just, you know, two, three years ago, this is the, the kind of rig that you have to build with uh, GoPro cameras, you know, to, to, to create these 360 environments, which were pretty, uh, pretty amazing. But and today, these are the cameras that you use, you know, it's uh, affordable cameras. You just basically click, and then you can upload to YouTube, Facebook, and the experience is actually pretty amazing, but it hasn't been adopted. Why? Because we don't want just to, to buy the thing and uh, put it on when, when you're home. You know, so this didn't really, really fly. The other thing that, uh, that you have are these VR headsets, which uh, we call it volumetric VR. These are more ex expensive headsets, and, uh, but the advantage is for, with these ones is basically you have this what we call the six degrees of freedom. So you can actually move around, you know, uh, uh, feel that you are actually in, 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 in reality, which is uh, pretty amazing. <clears throat> and in 2012, the, this uh, lady, Noni de la Peña, she's the one that actually made VR uh, mainstream. I actually put the, <laughs> the word here because I always forget the, the word. Anyway. Um, with, with an experience called Hunger in LA. So what she did, she was recording audio at, at a, um, what is this, this, food bank in LA. And, and suddenly this gentleman had a diabetic attack and so she, she, he fell down and nobody could do anything, you know? So she kept recording and what she did is basically recreated that scene. And this became the first ever VR experience shown and at any public event. This was Sundance. So I'm going to just show you a little bit of, of this. Okay. So as you can see, like the animation is not perfect. The you know the rendering and the 3D and everything okay. is just like it looks really super old. But but the, the fact that you were able to be there, you know. And experiencing what, experiencing what the other people was experiencing, and, you know, made, made you feel like you were there. Uh, here we have Alejandro González Iñárritu, yeah, that's the director yeah, of The Revenant and, you know, all other films. Oh it was his first experience too, uh, you know, about this VR. And he was so uh, moved that five years later, later he created uh, Carne Arena. So he, he, with that experience, he won the first ever Oscar uh, on VR. Uh, the, the thing about, about this experience was, and, and Noni didn't even know what their reaction was going to be uh, for, the, for the public. Is like, for example, you can, you can see this lady, she is crying. You know, and, and not only her, like many, many people that experienced this was uh, were crying. and feeling those emotions and empathy for, for, for the people, that, uh, for that gentleman. So this was the starting point uh, for multi-user multi VR. Well, that's what we call multi-user VR. So in 2016, four years later, The Void, uh, this company uh, used the, te the technology to, to advance VR, like a warehouse scale. So basically, you have four people playing you know, with with, uh, with shooters. So the first one with, they made was the Ghostbusters experience, and now they have many other many others. And it's a it's a, it's a business that is growing, and it's actually uh, really they're they're making good money. And this is the one that they they have right now, which is the Star Wars one, and you can actually experience it here in. Uh, I have in an assignment for you. The 
rebellion needs you, and we don't have much time. You How must many people together. have experienced this? You must not fail. In disguise, your team's mission is to recover Imperial intelligence critical to our survival. Looks like you'll have to fight your way out. So this is entertainment. So, so with VirtualWare, we've been we've been uh, doing 15 years of uh, business to business enterprise solutions. Uh, we have more than 500 projects uh, done in like 27 countries with many, many uh, corporate, like big corporations. We have 60 people working in, in Spain and, and, and Mexico. And now we just open here in Canada. So, uh, so we wonder, so what, what is the opportunity now that we have uh, with all this uh, that is happening? <clears throat> so the industry sectors like oil, aerospace, energy. So they're, they're, they're looking for available large scale VR solutions for training and simulation. Uh, and you'll see some numbers later. But the existing solutions, just like the one that I show you from, from um, the void, are constrained to a limited size or maximum number of users. Um, and also the existing solutions are expensive and, and complex to set up and maintain. So um, we came up with a warehouse scale uh, multi-user VR for enterprise. That, that's what we were doing for the last 15 years. So we can train workforce or design engineer or market and sales. Um, and this is a graph that I, that I just got from um, the super data. So if you see 71% of the training uh, for enterprise the, on, on 2018 was VR. Then 38% design and engineer and 35% sales. So this is actually happening. You know, it's, it's moving. Uh, so this one of the first experiments that we had in, in June 2017, so only two years ago. So what you see here is we really reversed how uh, VR multi-user was done. So our technology, we put uh, the one tracker on top of the headset instead of a lot of tracking uh, cameras around the, the area, tracking, tracking uh, people, you know? So you can actually interact and be whatever you want. You know, it doesn't really matter where, uh, in a factory or in a spaceship, just like Star Wars. So this is a 300 meter uh, lab that we have in Spain. So we created Immerso. So it's a warehouse scale multi-user VR tracking for, for enterprise. And this, this video explains basically what Real scale and multi-user virtual reality rooms are the next breakthrough in the immersive reality industry. The commercial virtual reality systems that currently exist in the market have limitations in terms of space and number of users. Moreover, the tracking solutions that help overcome these limitations require huge investment and have limited possibilities. Virtualware has overcome these limitations by developing an inside tracking system called Immerso. Immerso relies on a pattern recognition system that comprises of two elements. On one hand, the panels emit information, and on the other hand, the trackers recognize and interpret that same information to generate an absolute position with optimal precision and speed. Frente a otros sistemas de la competencia, no tenemos ningún límite de usuarios. Tampoco tenemos ningún límite en cuanto al tamaño. Some, uh, oops, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it, this this has uh, subtitles, but you know. Ningún límite en cuanto. As mentioned before, existing real-scale computers system adecuado nos permite realizar un seguimiento de usuarios de una forma muy precisa. In addition to the limitations mentioned before, existing real-scale virtual reality rooms have other downsides. The management of room operations is complex due to the number of computers, systems, and devices as well as the fact that a specially trained team is needed for content generation. Virtualware has developed Viru, Virtualware Immersive Room, a unique and complete turnkey solution consisting of two key elements. The hardware equipment and technology, either powered by Immerso technology or integrated with third-party technology and the necessary software package. 
This software package, called Viru Suite, enables organizations to generate and update content in a simple way after having some basic training. Virtual Web, llevamos más de 15 años trabajando con tecnologías de realidad virtual. Somos una de las empresas pioneras en el mundo. Viro es una solución perfecta para que los ingenieros de una compañía que están diseñando un producto sean capaces de revisar el diseño y tomar decisiones de manera consensuada en espacios de realidad virtual sin tener que invertir en generación de maquetas o en prototipos físicos. Nos va a permitir formar a nuestros equipos en procesos de trabajo. Vamos a ser capaces de entrenarles de una manera segura, rápida y efectiva. Asimismo, este tipo de soluciones posibilita la generación de proyectos de investigación Hoy en día hablamos de la transformación digital como un elemento clave en la mayoría de los sectores y la realidad virtual puede ser introducida en una compañía dentro de su concepto de transformación digital. Viro es nuestra apuesta para ello. Pretendemos instalar y poner en marcha nuestras salas, proveer del software que va a permitir que nuestros clientes puedan gestionar sus salas, generar contenidos nuevos y siempre con el apoyo y el soporte de VirtualWare por detrás. So this is this is how it works. So you have like the, our mod, uh, the modular ceiling uh, tiles, which are like this size. So when you install these tiles, which are like it's just like installing a bulb, just like that. You have you don't have to do anything else after. It's uh, it's very sturdy and you know. And then the, and the tracker is just like one tracker. So you don't have to put a lot of trackers and and stuff like that. And it's, it's also really really affordable. Um, so this is basically how it works. You have the, your HMD, which is the, the, the Oculus or Vive, or, or it doesn't matter which brand it is. Right now we're working with Leap Motion, but we're gonna basically, like Oculus already has announced that they're gonna have uh, their own tracking device for hands, for moving, so we won't use that. And you have a VR backpack, and that's all you need. So you can have 10, 20, or 100 people in, at the same time uh, in this room. And then we created the software, so you can, this, you can uh, load the, uh, the assets, content management, you can deploy it, you can, the facilities, so basically you have uh, the backpack, you can see how many, if, if the battery is slow, or if some, something is wrong with the, with the backpacks. Um, so that, that is the software. Uh, and, and the interface is very, very easy, so you don't have to be a tech guy to actually understand this software at all. And these are like the numbers that are, uh, so affordability and simplicity has always been our thing, you know, so this is, anybody basically can use this, any, any corporation. But if you see this graph, so uh, VR and AR will save enterprise $13 billion this year in training costs. So one of the things that is, is pretty amazing is 80%, uh, you're going to save 80% of your physical assets investment. So you, you, will, you will not have to build anything. Everything has, is, is going to be built basically virtually, you know? So training is expenses, bringing people from, from other countries to your facility to, to, uh, to be trained, it won't happen. You know, li little by little, VR is gonna take basically over, not only in the industry, uh, like enterprise, schools, universities, you know, r r really everywhere. And then something that is really cool that you can see like five, learning speed and retention is five times, basically. So, um, yeah, this is, I wouldn't say this is the future, this is what's happening right now. And uh, that's it, guys. <laughs>